Hey guys, in our last tutorial, I showed you how to break down the skeletal structure into a basic stick figure form that you can use to draw various animals. And in that tutorial, we talked about doing the cat. So today, I wanted to focus a little bit more on the cat skeletal structure, as well as how to draw this stick figure form, how to break it down into various poses. So what I want to start with today is I said I wanted to kind of reinforce my knowledge of the cat skeletal structure a little bit. So I have a few more printouts in some different poses. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice breaking this stick figure that we developed in our last video down into three these three skeletons. Then we're going to take this and do draw overs with those cat reference photos I showed you guys. So what we're doing is we are developing understanding, we're building our skills, and we're breaking down a complex creature into something that's a little bit easier to understand. So I hope you guys are looking forward to this tutorial. I'm recording this tutorial to help me prepare for one of the classes that I teach with the Little Art House. We're going to be drawing animals and of course to be a good teacher I feel like I need to have a recent refreshed idea of the topic as well as some really nice hands-on materials that the kids can use to better understand the subject hopefully get a better idea of what's going on if you're following along at home you can of course do this on a tablet simply save your image reduce the opacity add another layer on top of that or i would recommend printing it out and getting hands-on like i'm doing here when we do things by hand it creates a stronger memory just like when we teach things to other people it creates a stronger understanding which is one of the reasons i record these videos to give me a chance to practice these skills to help me kind of freshen up on the material that i'm going to be covering and to share what i know with other people who might not be able to afford art resources or art classes and this is made possible thanks to the phenomenal generosity of my amazing amazing Patreons, patrons, art nerds over on Patreon. If you like what I do and you want to help me to continue to do it and to offer it for free here on YouTube, you can join me at patreon.com slash soup. So we're going to walk through this cat skeleton just as a refresher. So I'm starting with the rib cage and those of you who watch my channel frequently might notice this is very similar to how I construct humans or rather how I go about thinking about how humans are constructed. And then we have the kitty's scapulas here, the shoulder bones. Up here we have the collarbone connecting the two forelegs and cats have degraded legs on both the forelimbs and the back limbs, the front legs and the back legs, and that means the leggies go backwards. So the elbows bend backwards. It's not like our knees that bend forward. So all I'm really focusing on here is not necessarily this like perfect understanding, perfect understanding of the cat's skeletal structure, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to break it down into a f reproducible form that is easy for me to understand and to recreate. And in a future tutorial, we're going to combine the ability to draw these stick figure forms with volumetric drawing. And that's gonna help us construct a more three-dimensional view of these animals. And this is very similar to the methods that I do when I'm drawing humans. So a lot of what I show you guys on this channel, it's kind of applicable to just about anything you want to learn how to draw. And then we have the tailbone and the backbone. So it seems like on cats, their scapula, their shoulder blades are really important. On some animals, they're not so important. On humans, when we're doing our stick figure form, they're not so important, but they can be useful to understanding movement. But for cats, it seems like they're really vital for understanding. So let's go ahead and do another. We're gonna do three. When we do things in multiples, it really helps with retention and understanding. 
I have a lot of other great drawing tutorials in the My Favorite Tutorials or My Favorite Drawing Tutorials playlist. I'm going to link that down in the description below. At this time, uh, this channel is COPPA compliant. And what that means is I recognize that my content is very appealing to younger viewers, even though uh, my goal is to reach artists of all ages and all stages, not just kids. I think anyone at any age can learn how to draw. But it means I can no longer easily link relevant videos in the cards or in the in screen, which is a shame. I would like to see YouTube fix that for those of us who make perennial evergreen all ages content. And you guys can actually help me out by letting YouTube know that that's something you as a viewer care about a lot. Okay, so now we have a very different view of our kitty. We have a crouched view. We have perhaps even the loaf view. And drawing, having access to pictures of skeletons with the cat in different poses is great because it really lets me see what's actually going on. It gives me a better understanding. And that's why we're drawing things in multiples. The more you draw something, the better you're going to get at it, the more you're going to understand. So the more studies you do, the more practice you do, the stronger you're going to be as an artist. And that's why I recommend you guys do drawing warm-ups from reference every day. And that's why, and people don't like hearing this, I recommend if you can, you put an hour of dedicated study every day. If you actually care about improving as an artist, you will find an hour somewhere. It can be bits and pieces, but an hour total of study every day. So we have our backbone. Then we have our head, which kind of come to decide is shaped I don't know what this shape is called, this three-dimensional shape. It's like half a cone. And then the front, when the mouth is shut, with which, with Bowie, his mouth is never shut, we have a cone there as well. Interesting, cats are interesting. And then we have one more skeletal study to do before we can dive into more practical application. So I've mentioned in other videos that drawing is all about putting mileage on your pencil through practice. And that's one of the reasons I like doing these videos with you guys is this is applied practice for me also. So this helps me get my hour in, helps me get my practice in. Okay, so let's, let's reference. We're always allowed to reference. Let's reference our previously drawn cat. I know some of you guys are watching what I'm doing and you're thinking, why, Becca, you're tracing. You're right, I am tracing. I am tracing to get a better understanding of the animal and the forms of this animal. I have no intention of passing this off as like, look at this amazing original art I did, TM, do not steal. This is for study, this is for my own education. And when you're tracing to better understand something that's there's a difference between tracing for education and tracing for your own studies uh -huh. so this is wow okay i goofed that this right here is actually the four in the front and then there's a pole and then there's this foot back here okay now I understand. So you see, there's a difference between tracing so you can better understand. This looks like a dog. It says it's a cat, but this is this is like a cowering dog pose. And I know cats, when they're really afraid, will tuck their tails. Although that's not something I see Bo do hardly ever. But looks like the dog I did in the other video. Anyway, we're tracing for education. This is going in my sketchbook. I'm gonna use this to show my students, but it's really just to better understand. I'm not trying to pass this off as a finished product. Okay, so we have 
three. Actually, we have four because we have my initial cat stick figure. So how are we going to apply this cat stick figure to drawing cats? So what I have here is I have several printouts of cats in different poses. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put tracing paper over them. We're going to break these poses down into this stick figure that we've developed based on what we've learned from doing these studies.
So we have drawn a bunch of cats and actually I don't need a big piece like that. This is going to be my last one for today, but I hope you guys can kind of see how as I did it over and over and over again, it became very quick for me because I started to really understand from a stick figure perspective, from a very basic gesture perspective, from a drawing mannequin perspective, what was going on. So if you were inspired by that, if you're like, aha, and it makes a light bulb click in your head, that's awesome. If you saw what I did and it 100% did not work for you, that's fine too. I'd like to inspire you to try it because I'm finding it to be very helpful and I look forward to exploring this a lot more in the future. But I definitely understand that not everything I talk about on this channel and not every technique I show you guys is actually going to be useful for you personally as an artist. I just wanna give you guys different tools and share different techniques that I've learned over the years that can maybe help you a bit more. I've never been the sort of artist who wants to just give like a step-by-step -step straightforward tutorial because a big part of being an artist is learning how to see things and learning how to think critically. 
And if I just tell you how to do it, you don't ever have to develop those skills. So this is our final kitten. And I think in an upcoming video, I kind of want to show you guys, we're going to stick with cats, partially because I like cats, but also because we've already done so much work drawing different cats and figuring out the skeletal structure and practicing the gesture. In an upcoming video, I want to show you guys how I can use these stick figures and then flesh the animal out. I know we've talked about using constructive anatomy and volumetric drawing to also flesh these animals out. So before I totally say goodbye, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a large one so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take one of these. We're going to do this little guy right here. Let me see if I can find a scrap piece of tracing paper. That's large enough. I might not. I might have to cut something. And we're going to, I'm going to walk you through drawing this little guy volumetrically. And then that'll be just like a little teaser for an upcoming video, something to kind of look forward to. And while this is a lot of work, you're right, you know, um, you probably, this is probably more investment than people who just Googled how to draw a cat are looking for. What I hope this will be is I hope this will be permission to really start your artistic journey. And it'll show you guys how to think about things when you're drawing them instead of just following along with a step-by-step -step tutorial. And it'll also hopefully give you the keys that you need to draw other animals. So this is a little sneak peek for our volumetric drawing video. And before I completely lose you, I do want to remind you guys that I also have a coffee account. If you're not interested in uh, joining my Patreon community, you, you can't afford to do it every month, but you want to support what I did or you want to say thank you for a particular video or a particular series of videos. And you can find that at K o hyphen f i dot com slash natto soup and a t t o s o u p you'll find that down in the description below i apologize i i'm having a hard time seeing and normally what i do when i do these kind of draw over, over videos is i also have my reference on my computer but my desktop blue screen to death on me today so kind of running without it this is not necessarily how I would always do it because I would normally have a secondary reference I can see. Because I can't, you guys can actually see the cat better than I can see it. So what I'm doing is I'm using cones for the limbs and sometimes they're adjusted cones, not cones, cylinders, but this one's a cone up here for the, the limbs, the um, tops of the legs. And then I am using a couple of oblongs for the body of the cat. And then for the tail, and see if I were doing this correctly, I would draw it through instead of just drawing hemispheres. We have it's kind of like a long, long comb. And then this is where I should have drawn the cat's scapula because it actually makes the back stand out a little bit. Now, remember, we decided that cats have kind of a half conical shape to their faces. And then if it were to connect into the neck, it would be a cylinder. Okay, so on this part of the face, we have, and I, I'm not tracing it, I'm just redrawing it. So I'm actually slightly off. His nose should be down here. And then maybe I would break that up. Because remember, in our first skeletal drawing of the cat, let me see if I can find it, we decided that the skull has two parts the back of the skull and then the the face, the muzzle of the animal. 
So this would be the muzzle, and then this would be the back part of the skull. And then the ears, let me see if I can even see the ears. Not really, but we're gonna do them anyway. The ears are little triangular pyramids. So you see, once we kind of understand, once we understand the stick figure, the sketch form, we can use volumetric perspective, or I'm sorry, volumetric drawing to just kind of bulk the cat out a little bit and draw the rest of the animal. We did so much drawing today, guys. If you guys were drawing along, I'm really proud of you because we really put a lot of colored lead on paper today. So we spent today really kind of digging in and figuring out how to draw a stick figure, a posable drawing mannequin for cats. And this kind of builds on what we did in our last tutorial where we figured out how to draw stick figures for various different animals, including cats. So we're kind of building along a theme. Here's our original reference and then at the end of our time together i showed you guys how to flesh it out just a little bit using volumetric perspective a sneak peek for our next video and here's a sneak peek from our last video where we took those are the cat skeletons i have a duck i have a dog i have an elephant i have a crow so we didn't we aren't just limiting ourselves to pets we're not just limiting ourselves to animals we see all the time we're exploring a variety of different animals here's a horse i have another horse for you guys if you guys would like to see a tutorial on how to draw a specific animal from figuring out the stick figure all the way to volumetric construction and adding fur or scale or feathers uh, let, get a hold of me. Let me know. You guys can let me know in my Discord server, the paint box. I'll have a link to that down in the description below. We've lost comments on videos that I know will appeal to children, which I'm really not happy about. And I wish YouTube would strongly reconsider that stance because as a teacher, it's hard for me to answer your questions and to fulfill your requests if we don't have any form of communication whatsoever. So you can get a hold of me through email or through the paint box. And if you like what I do and you want to help me continue to be able to afford to do it, you can join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. If you're looking for more great art and drawing tutorials, I have a playlist, my favorite drawing tutorials. I'm going to link that down in the description below where you guys can find it. And if you live in the Nashville or the greater New Orleans area, I teach art classes in both areas. You guys can sign up for my class mailing list to find out when I might be in your area. Um, I also show, I also create flyers and graphics for my classes and you guys can learn about those classes over on my Instagram as well as check out my art and illustration at Instagram.com slash NatoSoup. That's a great way to get kind of a sneak peek of what's coming up on this channel. So I am so proud of you guys. We did so much drawing today. You guys are really coming along with your sketchbooks, getting those pages filled, putting some mileage on your drawing pencils, on your drawing tablets. Remember, the more you draw, the better you're going to get at drawing. The more you practice, the more you study, and the more you do what some people think of as kind of the boring stuff. I think this is fun. I really love figuring out how things are put together, and I love doing studies but I know some people don't, but the more you do these, the better you're going to get at drawing and the stronger you're going to be as an artist. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys again really soon. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.